This video explains how to estimate the size of a population when you can't count the animals in it directly. Some things you can count directly. Look at these barnacles. They're seashore creatures. They're glued down. And uh, you can count them easily if you've got a lot of spare time and a limited social life. These limpets also can be counted easily. Um, you can count those. Um, they're not likely to run away when you're counting them. Other things, this is much more difficult. So here we have a population, or a couple of populations actually, very hard to count directly. Things like small mammals, uh, mice, voles and shrews, fish, birds, often difficult to count directly. So what do you do with a population like that? Well, what you do is you revert to mark and recapture. And this is how it works. Here's a population that we can't count directly. There's too many of them and they're too lively. And they're dancing. And uh, so we take a random sample. Here's our random sampling device, take a random sample, and here's our sample just collected. We need to mark the individuals in this sample so that we'll recognize them again. So let's take one in a can of spray paint and give him a mark. There he is, dancing away in a nice blue way. This is a boring way to do it, so let's speed things up by using the banana tanning booth. Here they come, nicely sprayed and nicely marked. So release our marked individuals back into the original population. There they go, and leave them to mix up. How long you leave them for will depend on uh, what the, the nature of the population, how lively it is and so on. These are very lively, so we're not going to leave them very long. We're going to re resample the population. There it is. Take our random sample again. And now we're going to open our sampling device by moving the lever, opening the banana release portal and initiating the conveyor belt, and then we count the total number in the sample and the number that we've recaptured, i.e. the ones we sprayed blue. Here's the banana release portal, and here's the first one, it's yellow. There it goes. And here's the next one, that's yellow. And another yellow one. And another yellow one. There's a blue one. And another yellow one. And there's a blue one. And another yellow one. And there's another blue one. And uh, there, yeah, there they go, into the banana restraining apparatus from the end of the conveyor belt. There's another, there's another blue one going in and so on. So, <clears throat> let's see what we got. If our second sample has a lot of the re a lot of recaptures in it, ones that we sprayed blue, that implies a small population because we haven't diluted as it were our marked individuals among a whole mass of unmarked individuals. If our second sample has few recaptures in it, then that implies that our original population size was large because we have diluted our marked individuals among a whole mass of unmarked individuals. Let's look at it a little bit more formally now. This formula is known as the Lincoln Index and basically what we're doing is we're assuming that the uh, ratio of the number that you marked in the first sample divided by the whole population, that's the bit we don't know, is the same ratio as the total number that we recaptured in the second sample divided by the total size of the second sample. If you don't sample at random, and if the animals marked and unmarked don't mix at random, then this can't possibly work. But if it does work, we can rearrange the formula to get our one unknown, which is the size of the population P, on this side uh, uh, of the uh, formula, and uh, three bits we do know, the total size of the first sample, the total size of the second sample, and the number of recaptures uh, on that side. Let's look at, at it with some simple numbers. Here's a population, an imaginary population of 100 individuals. We're going to mark them. Let's take a sample of 50. Uh, we'll mark them. Um, there's the rest of the population. Uh, and uh, we'll mark out 50 in the first sample, what I called A in the formula. So I've sprayed them green. Now, we release them back into the original population and leave them to mix up. Let's see, we've left them to mix up. We come back and we take another sample of the population, again at random. Let's take 50 again. Now, you know that we marked one in two of the original population. Of course, you wouldn't know that if you were doing this for real. Uh, but how many would you expect of this 50 to be marked? Well, one in two if they've mixed up randomly and we've sampled randomly. You would expect 25 unmarked and 25 with the mark on, sprayed green in our case. We now have all the bits we need to work out the size of the population. So slotting those numbers into our formula, we get the correct answer.
Hooray! It works beautifully every time when you do it like this. If you're doing it for real, there are a lot of things that can go horribly wrong. And if you go to the Dale Thorpe blog, uh, you can find out what those things are. You don't want to miss them. Go and find out. If you're, if you're reading the Dale Thorpe blog, just continue to read down the page and we'll talk about the assumptions that are made by the Lincoln Index. Thank you very much for watching and listening.